reckless Rudolph and sensible Sam represent the dual personalities in all of us. These two, uh-oh, here comes trouble. Here's Rudy now. Go on, pass him. He's only going 40. Some fun, eh? Here comes a car. Better see what's behind <laughs> you first. <laughs> Take it easy. There's a car coming. Take a chance. We can beat him. <laughs> got him that time. Sensible Sam was right. But what Sam didn't tell the driver was that passing a car going 40 was like passing 18 cars parked bumper to bumper. That's 300 feet or more, and that takes time. So we ought to make sure whether any car is coming, and doubly sure there's plenty of distance between. We drivers insist on having enough power to climb steep hills. We also demand quick starting and fast pickup. When engineers give us this power, speed naturally results. The reserve speed is only a byproduct of the demand for power. Come on, pep it up. Here comes a swell curve. Slower, slower, slower! Boy, oh, you almost went for a spill. Right again, Sam. And this introduces old Man Mountain Momentum, the fellow with a one-way mind. He likes to push along a straight line. On a turn, he not only pushes, but applies side pressure. The faster the turn, the more side pressure. He calls this hold on you centrifugal force, and he's pinned many a good man down with this one. Speedway curves are banked to offset this force. An aviator tilts his plane on turns to counteract it. But this grip of momentum is dangerous. We drivers should always keep our cars under control. Good drivers tell us that in climbing hills, we should always go into second gear when our speed drops to 20 miles an hour. There aren't any laws to make us go down steep hills in second, but experienced drivers say this too is a good rule. Go on, boss. You drove all the way up that hill in second. Slip her into neutral and let her coast down. It'll be fun. <laughs> don't, boss, don't. Look behind you. It's that big push again. Man Mountain Momentum may be a friend starting uphill, but he'll push us right off the road if we go down too fast. Easy. Use your engine as a brake. Use your passing lights, too. There's nothing more on the road. Step on it. Here's where I get him. <laughs> Don't overdrive your headlights. Careful. Slow down. You won't be able to stop soon enough. There might be something up ahead. You can't see as well at night. I'll show you. What did I tell you? Aren't you glad you cut your speed? The margin of safety at night distance our lights, good or bad, let us see ahead clearly. Overdriving our headlights means we cannot stop within this space. This includes the distance spent while deciding to stop and while moving the foot to the brake pedal and pressing it down. We must remember that cars driving at speeds that cannot stop in this distance are taking chances. miles to the next town. Can't keep awake. <laughs> Listen, boss. I'm sleepy, too. Look, let's not take any more chances of overdriving ourselves. How's about it? Foiled again, but I'll get him yet. I'll get him. Oh, yeah? Mother Nature slows us down every now and then with mist and fog. When a good heavy fog comes on land, at sea, or in the air, everything that moves, moves with caution. The ocean liner slows down. Airlines ground their planes. Even trains on tracks sometimes have to reduce their speed. And we drivers must make our way cautiously. 
Hurry up. You're late for the party. Take it easy. Better to get there late than not at all. Set your lights down and they won't reflect in your face. Don't be afraid to use your horn. Are you sure your tail and stop lights are working? Keep close to the right. Usually in our cars, we're trying to reduce friction all we can. We use ball bearings and roller bearings. We smooth and polish parts. We put oil into our cars, all to overcome friction. In starting a car, stopping it, or turning a corner, we need road friction for our tires. But when ice and snow come, the normal condition of this friction is changed. If we are as careful behind the wheel in slippery weather as we are in feeling our way on foot, we can easily adjust ourselves to this change. Come on, keep going. You can stop in time. Easy on your brakes. Gently. Feel the surface of the road. That's it. Now start easily. Engage your clutch slowly. Don't spin your wheels. No chance to skid. See? When going along the highways, we drivers should make it our business to watch the road signs, know what they mean, benefit from what they tell us, act on their advice. If we get in the habit of disregarding them, they lose their meaning, and sooner or later, we'll be sorry. Just one, boss. Coming to school late. There. Aren't you glad you were able to stop? When we look down on traffic from a tall building, we wonder how all those cars can keep moving along, crossing intersections, parking and passing each other, without getting hopelessly tangled up. But when we become a part of that traffic, it's often more confusing. We can't see those things up ahead that make us stop and start. We can't see what's going on in other people's minds. Every intersection, every alley, every car should be under suspicion. We can't let the other fellow's mistake get us into trouble. Give that bozo a bit of your mind. Hey, you! Why don't you pay attention where you're going? Get out of that car and I'll... Well, I'll... <laughs> well, I'll... <laughs> Talking to yourself, boss. Funny you don't recognize yourself when you're a pedestrian. Expert drivers tell us we must give ourselves a margin of safety, a reserved space between our car and the one ahead. Most of us drive automatically, but it doesn't pay to let our thoughts go wool gathering. Remember the show last night? <laughs> I'm in the mood for love. <laughs> At Simply last I got him. You're near me. Funny. Christus, I'll fix you for this, you meddling fool, spoiling all my fun. Be courteous. Two. Know how to drive. Three. Both hands on wheel. Four. Watch traffic signs. Five. Keep a safety margin. Six. Use hand signals. Seven. Keep right. Eight. Keep sober. Nine. Stop when angry. Ten. Obey all laws. The See you.